Did you know quantum travel is about to see a complete changeup? Or that three different ships are being turned into settlements for AI to offer missions to players? There are some really interesting things happening in Star Citizen development right now, and this is going to be your summary of all the interesting bits last month. If you enjoy this, consider subscribing and checking out the second channel for a more detailed read through. And thank you for coming to My Tomato Talk. In AI tech, the team worked on improvements to quantum travel and quantum boosting, the latter being a recognizable term after a few previous mentions, but not one we know much about. Quantum travel will be changing in the near future, but one of the only clues that we have as to how that could happen is in the next sentence. Ships can accelerate while spooling before the actual jump. This is an interesting detail, but we're going to talk about it later on in this monthly report when we get a couple other bits of information. A great addition was the restoration of something called occlusion calculation, which will keep NPCs from wasting ammunition on hidden targets. Everybody has seen an NPC blindly shooting at a wall. This falls in line with the addition of faction-specific targeting as well. An example of this would be security forces avoiding shooting their own allies while also avoiding shooting civilians, as opposed to Ninetales who would, you know, shoot everyone. Animation was small this month, with plenty of general facial animation seeing work. But I want to highlight again that we're seeing more talk of a mission giver here. This will likely be a testing bed for whatever the new generation of mission givers will be. I expect this to eventually turn into something big, so we'll keep an eye on it in anticipation of something likely next year. Character Art spent time working on new armor variants, which also means new backpacks and pyro outfits. The ship team began improving all ship damage maps for the salvage feature coming up, and plenty of vehicles saw progress. The Banu Merchantman continued through the gray box phase, along with another unannounced ship. An additional unannounced ground vehicle progressed into final art, while the tugboat Argo SRV neared white box complete. The Drake Corsair is continuing through development as well, with plenty of work being completed in the interior and work progressing in the gray box phase on the exterior. We've been hearing plenty about rope physics in a few of the last monthly reports. Here's another mention. A new dynamic entity has been added to simulate a rope running over a pulley wheel. A rope on a pulley could mean many things, though I'm surprised it would still be so common 900 years in the future. One of the main applications I could see for this though would be repelling into caves, but we'll see if that happens. For the rest of the engine work, Gen 12 received a ton of progress as it continues through what feels like the bulk of the work now. The hope is that the engine team will be able to enable the forward stage soon and we can start to see the new and improved game rendering engine bring some much needed optimizations to the game. The current expectation is that this process will reach another milestone around October of this year. If you'd like more in-depth info on this segment, check out my livestream from last week on the channel. The character feature team continued work on the ground-based radar and scanning feature, working on the ping visual effects to highlight different visible contacts, points of interest, and interactable objects. The information gathered will also be increased, informing players of things like a cause of death, inventory manifest, or hackability. I believe this will be supported by the lens and visor updates I've been harping on about in the UI section, and I think this will go a huge distance in making this game more understandable for players. However, it sounds like there is still plenty of work to be done. On the vehicle side of things, we have another mention of quantum boosting, but this time with more context. The aim is making it feel right as ships accelerate and attempt to maintain heading. This feature also supports points of interest allowing pilots to fly towards highlighted destinations. This almost makes quantum travel sound a bit more like Elite Dangerous Super Cruise in that you need to maintain a heading and accelerate. This can't be confirmed one way or another, but it would be a monumental change from the way the feature has always functioned and may mean that quantum traveling is completely free to the player to do as they please. This will change the way fuel, interdiction, and travel as a whole are considered. 
but we'll wait to see where this goes before drawing any conclusions. The graphics team worked on damage maps, implementing the ability for debris to create its own damage map even after being separated from the parent. This could allow for small parts of ships to get damaged and be broken into even smaller parts of ships. The team also continued porting over parts of the game to Gen 12 and preparing for Vulcan support. The lighting team did a lot of work on the upcoming Siege of Orison mission, the same event we've likely been hearing about since the beginning of the year. This event has taken a ton of work from a lot of teams, with lighting wrapping up their own work in anticipation of 317.2, which will likely release around July. This event makes use of massive outdoor urban areas, something that hasn't previously been done in the game, and calls for particular lighting that works both in the day and at night. The team also worked on the new derelict reclaimer locations, which are looking really good. Speaking of locations, the initial proof of concept for the derelict settlements, another reclaimer, is wrapping up in Montreal along with the space base location using the same ship. While additional variations of this location will continue to be worked on, the 600i and Mercury Star Runner derelict settlements are also being built. These teams seem to be very quickly iterating on their initial work to keep the content flowing. I like that. The production of the new Loreville has also begun, moving on from the concept phase, and the building interior locations we learned about in last month's report entered the concept phase. One goes out, another comes in. The narrative team is currently focusing heavily on improving the new player experience by using a system to better introduce players to the game mechanics. This likely will work in line with things scanned we talked about earlier in the report, the visor rework, and the HUD improvements on the progress tracker. They are also creating new missions and initiatives as well as developing new mission archetypes, hopefully related to some of these professions we saw teased earlier this year. The tools team in Montreal last month deployed the first tool resulting from the Mighty Bridge tool revealed recently. This vegetation scattering tool will allow teams to place vegetation without collisions, brushes, and entities on planet surfaces and objects. This will make the process much quicker and is a precursor to ship craters and fidelity improvements for derelicts. Finally. VFX concept art also began work on the quantum travel rework. This includes storyboarding the gameplay requirements at each stage of the process, such as spooling, entering, and exiting travel. Currently, the team is figuring out how this will look in engine. It's safe to say after this monthly report that the new form of quantum travel is going to be much different. From the idea of maintaining a heading and acceleration to completely reconcepting the look of the travel method. It's sounding much more applied and much more substantial than I had thought. These types of revelations are why I enjoy monthly reports. This is where we really get an idea of the direction and flow of the company building Star Citizen. Weekly shows and patch notes give us a slice of the development at a time, but monthly reports package up the company's work from almost every dev team and provide context for all the different ongoing work. In my opinion, there's no other way to get a consistent, detailed view of what's actually going on in the company, and not just what's planned for release. If you enjoy these summaries of the interesting bits, consider subscribing for more, and check out the playlist I have of all the other monthly reports. And if you want the full detailed read-through as well as other content, check out my second channel, Space Tomato 2. And whether I see you over there or over here again, I hope you learned something in this video, and I'll catch you in the next one.